But as you can see, I'm a little older than the rest of the crew here. And I have to explain to you what I'm doing here. I won this for seven minutes as a dare for my family, as a charity <laughs> auction. I got an email a couple of months ago. <laughs> I got an email a couple of months ago from this charity. And I'm a knee doctor. I'm actually an orthopedic surgeon in Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. I run the knee center. And I see knees for 30 years. So I see this email come by, and it's for a charity that supports knee research. You know, the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, football players tear it. And this was a charity that supports research on it. So I bid on it, actually won the seven minutes of stage time. So I come out here, I, but I feel I was misled a little bit. The charity apparently has nothing to do with the knee. It's, it was really the ACLU. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it has something to do with like freedom of speech or something. Like that. <laughs> really need to check my email. <laughs> I see about 100 patients a week, and periodically my day is ruined by Dr. Oz. <laughs> Patients come in, you know, patients come, used to, used to be they'd come in with uh, the National Star and the National Enquirer articles about another potion that was going to alleviate their arthritic pain, but now it's Dr. Oz, you know, and he's, like my, my patients, I look we got a very ethnic population, they come, hey doc, you know, when, when people say, hey doc, you know, you're in trouble, hey doc, uh, the wife, uh, the wife was uh, watching Dr. Oz yesterday, and oh, oh by the way, I, I, any single women here, um, if you want to get married in Wilkesbury, not only do you take your husband's last name, you lose your name. You become the wife, as in the wife and I are going to Atlantic City. So they don't have a name. So he says, the wife, the wife was watching Dr. Ross, and he, Dr. Ross said, if I, if I buy his extract of dried sheep dung and I wrap it and I put it on my knee twice a day for a year, my arthritis isn't going to hurt. You know, and and then like I, I say. Um, uh, you know, I, I was absent that day in medical school when we, we discussed dried sheep dung as the arthritis treatment of choice, so I really can't be authoritative on that. You know, Dr. Oz, yeah, guys, I could go on and on about Dr. Oz. I don't have any time for Dr. Oz. The internet is great, though. You know, the internet has helped me out because, you know, what I do is I don't have to talk as much. Um, you know, go ahead and, uh, like, torn meniscus. I do a lot of meniscus. Hey, Go read the one billion Google things on torn meniscus. Talk to me in a week. What you, you know, tell me what you want to know. The only thing I don't understand about the internet is: you ever buy anything online, like with the Amex card? You know, you buy a toaster from Best Buy and you go pick it up. You buy it immediately. Your iPad goes down. You know, Amex is just deducted. You know, forty bucks for a toaster. You know, right? Then the toaster doesn't work. The bagel doesn't fit in it. You take it back to Best Buy. They give you a credit. They say, "Oh, Amex will credit you in four to six weeks." I said, what, 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 did they, they have like AOL uh, dial-up in American <laughs> Express? I mean, it takes them four to six weeks to get back into the server to give you your money? I never, I don't understand that. You know, what are they doing? It, it, it should be the same. You give Amex your money, get your money back right away. I don't know why. Anyway, I digress. Uh, when, you're, when you're a medical student, you know, your third, your, your third, drives me crazy, I don't understand. Third, third year of medical school, third year of medical school, you've got, to, you've got to see patients. And I remember it was very depressing to me because everybody was sick, you know, I, I'm Jewish, and I was ordered to become a doctor by my parents. And I remember getting to medical school, and I called up my father and said, what did you get me into? Everybody's sick. You know, I do this for a living. They're coughing on you, you're puking, you got to stick your finger up their poopy hole. I said, who wants to do this for a living? It's a disgusting profession. Disgusting. That's why I became an orthopedic surgeon, is because you know we're, we're not dealing with, with sick people, we're dealing with injured people. It's a little better. Then they come into the hospital and get sick, but that's an entirely different thing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I had a lady from Bolivia. And, and I, was, I speak a little Spanish, and as a third year student, I had to work her up. She was short of breath. And uh, they were going to do, this was in Jefferson in the, in the uh, 70s. It was a heart surgery. They were going to replace three of her valves. And let me tell you, the chance that even today it's a risky procedure, and the chances of her, uh, you know, surviving it were minimal. I, let me let me put it in more contemporaneous terms: the chances of this poor Bolivian woman getting out of Jefferson Hospital alive in the '70s was like that of a. Hollywood actress getting out of Harvey Weinstein's apartment without seeing his dick. <laughs> you know, it's very unlikely that, that would happen. 
and you know, when she lived, she lived on top of a mountain, so that's why she was short of breath. She lived at 12,000 feet from La Paz, Bolivia. She came to Philadelphia, she was at sea level, she felt great. And she was gonna die from this operation, so the family asked me, I said, tienes que salir del este hospital más rápido que es posible. <laughs> Does anybody speak Spanish? Yeah. yeah, you've got to get out of this hospital as quickly as possible. They're going to kill you. So we got her out of the hospital. I wrote down there, and I think she, she survived. But it was funny because she, all she had to do was move to sea level, and she, would, and, and she would have been fine. So anyway, now that I'm a doctor, what do you guys, you guys, when you come to us, you know, the typical scenario today is it's crazy. You tear your knee up, you got a locked knee, and you've got your health insurance. And now we've got a battle. We've got a battle to get your money. And that's the only thing I don't understand about health insurance. Health insurance is they have your money, and, we, and you have to fight to get your money out of your health insurance company so you can get treated. It's, it's, it's totally crazy. So you come, you, right? So you come, it gets, it gets worse. So, and then the government gets involved. So, uh, you know, and the government gets involved, which is crazy because you can bet whatever health plan the government passes, none of those congressmen have it. They always have something good. They don't have a $5,000 deductible, deductible like you guys have. But anyway, so a person comes in with a torn meniscus, they can't move their knee. Now, I've been in practice 30 years. If I can't tell what's wrong with your knee in five minutes without an MRI, I should be selling storm windows. I really shouldn't sell it like the But now we have to get an MRI because if we don't get an MRI, the government reviews me and says I'm not following the protocol. So we have to order an MRI. Then we have to get the MRI pre-approved, right? You have to get it pre-authorized. So you call up somebody and they say, what? We want to pre-authorize an MRI. He says, well, we can't do it because they haven't had physical therapy. I said, physical therapy? The guy can't move his knee. You will Uber you over from your pre-authorization. You try to move. <laughs> He's gonna kill you. It'd be like if you went to a dentist, right? And you had a cavity. And, and, and the dentist is chewing these Butterfinger bars for a week and tell me how your, tell me how your cavity feels. And if it's still hurting you, then I'll fill it. You no, know, you, need, you need an MRI done. You can't get an MRI. It's, as I said, it's the only place where you're begging to get your money back. You give them $10,000 a year and you're fighting to get your money. There is no other business that does that. How would you like it if every time you went to the ATM you had to give a reason to the machine while you were taking your money out of it? And if the machine didn't like your reason, they wouldn't give you your money. It would be like, be great. You know, you go to the bank, you know, I want $5,000. What do you want $5,000? Well, I'm getting, I'm getting married and I want to buy a diamond ring for my girlfriend. The teller says, uh, you know, we know your girlfriend. Uh, she works here. Um, she's really, really hot, and uh, she needs a bigger ring. <laughs> We're not giving you five thousand dollars. You've really got to commit to, to twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. So the health insurance people don't give you your money. Well, this is going to be my second and last attempt at doing stand up. So I'm going to do something most comics don't do. I'm going to tell you a doctor joke because no one tells jokes anymore. I've thought if I ever did this again, just come up and tell seven minutes of jokes. Anyway, it deals with a guy. The guy is pissing all over himself. That's the premise of the joke. <laughs> He's peeing all over himself, so he goes to the top urologist in San Francisco. And you know, he goes through a thorough evaluation. The guy, doctor comes out and says, your kidneys are fine, your bladder are fine. There's nothing wrong with you except, and I don't want to be uh, you know, funny about it, but you have the smallest penis I've ever seen. And I've been a urologist for 30 years. I've seen thousands of patients. The guy says, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's really bad, you know, because by the time I feel like I'm going to pee and then I you know, open my zipper and I try to hunt around and find it, and by the time I get it out, I piss all over myself. <laughs> so the doctor says, yeah, but you're married? Yeah, 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 I'm married. And you got three kids? Yeah, you got three kids. The doctor says, well, how's your sex life? And the doctor the guy says, all right. The doctor says, how is that possible? He says, doc. When we have sex, we got two of us looking for it. <laughs> hey, thank you very much. Appreciate it.